the human brain. When you are studying the human brain, you must be using the German accent. Not really, but it always makes it a little bit more fun. First, you must know the front of the brain and the back of the brain. Okay, I'm going to stop it with the German accent. So, the front of the brain, called the frontal lobe. The back of the brain, this is called the occipital lobe. In the middle here, you've got the parietal lobe and you've got the temporal lobe here. Now, it's not important to remember all these parts of the brain. I'm just giving you a little bit of a rundown of these parts of the brain so that you're a bit more familiar with it, you feel a bit more comfortable about what the brain is, what it looks like, um, and, and what maybe some of the functions of the brain are. So there's these bits that protrude out. This is the gray matter on the outside because if this was a real brain, it would look kind of custody in terms of viscosity and in, in consistency. Um, it would be really floppy um, and the outside would look gray because the outside is all the neurons. Um, and the white matter that's inside, that's all the extensions of the neurons called axons, which are co covered in a myelin sheath. And that's a, a fatty acid sheath that helps um, neurons transmit information faster um, through their axons to other neurons um, because the, the brain basically is, is an electronic device and it's sending these signals um, between neurons and that's, that's the, the, the basic unit of brain function is neuron, um, neurons firing and sending electrochemical signals to each other. So you've got these um, parts of the brain which fold out. Um, they're called the gyri. A single one is called a gyrus. And then you've got the sulci, or the, a single one is called a sulcus, and the sulcus is where it sinks in a bit. So um, what's separating the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe is the central sulcus. And either side of the central sulcus, you've got um, the somatosensory cortex and the motor cortex. Um, the somatosensory cortex is a part of the parietal lobe that, that receives sensory signals from the rest of your brain. And then the motor cortex, which is part of the frontal lobes, forgive me if I'm wrong, always double check me, but um, this is just to gain a little bit of familiarity with, um, with the brain. The motor cortex is, is part of the brain that's involved in sending signals um, to the rest of your body to move muscles. Essentially, the only thing your brain does is receive signals, and the only action it takes in the world is to contract or relax muscles. Even your talking, even your speech is the contraction and relaxation of your vocal cords, of these muscles in your throat that help you talk, and of your lungs, of course, to help you breathe and project that air through the vocal cords. So the frontal cortex um, is, is quite large in humans um, compared to other species. It's part of forethought, it's part of thinking, it's part of our rationality, it's part of our um, morality as well. Um, it's a very important part of the brain. It's not essential to um, cognitive function or to, it's not essential to, to survival, which is an interesting part of the, the forebrain, the frontal lobes. Um, but if you want to learn more about the frontal lobes, look up a guy called Phineas Gage. Um, really interesting quasi-natural experiment where uh, part of his front, frontal lobe was removed by an, an accident and uh, his behavior before and after the accident changed. Uh, at the back of the brain, you've got this structure here called the occipital lobe. And in the occipital lobe is um, uh, your visual cortex. And the visual cortex receives signals from your eyes. So um, signals from your eyes go to the back of your, hit the back of your retina, travel through the optic nerve, through the optic chiasm, um, and back through the lateral geniculate nucleus and through to the back of your brain to the visual cortex. And it takes anywhere up to about 500 milliseconds for a photon of light to be trans trans transmitted to the back of your brain and to then pass forward to become part of conscious experience. I'm not expecting you to rem remember any of this. It's just uh, little fun facts about the brain so that you're a bit more familiar about how it operates. So um, then at the back of the brain, you've got these two structures here. Uh, called the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is really important in motor coordination, so coordinating all your muscles. And if you um, take one half of it out and cut it in half, you get this interesting cauliflower tree shape formation there. And it's interesting sort of structure of the cerebellum. So as we pull these parts of, of the brain apart, we have the cortex here on the top, and then we have the brain stem coming down 
the bottom. And here we have the pituitary gland. These lobes here on the side are the temporal lobes. On the left-hand side of your brain, generally in the left-hand side of the brain, particularly if you're a right-hander, um, you'll have the Broca's area of the brain and the Wernicke's area of the brain, which are really important areas of the brain for speech, um, the production of, of speech and also the reception of speech and comprehension. Um, then we can split the brain in half. So there's different kinds of slices of the brain. You can do sagittal slices, coronal slices, and then what's the other one? Coronal, sagittal, there's a third one. I've forgotten what it is. Anyway, we're going to split our brain in half and have a look on the inside. So on the inside, you'll see this interesting structure down the middle here that's white. Now that's white matter, and it's, it's a bridge between the two hemispheres of your brain, between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And that bridge between the hemispheres is called the corpus callosum. And we've learned a lot about the corpus callosum from uh, these uh, patients who had their corpus callosum cut to help stop the spread of their epileptic seizures from one hemisphere to the other hemisphere. And we've learned a lot, a lot about um, the left-hand side of the brain and the right-hand side of the brain through the cutting of that corpus callosum in those patients. That's an extreme um, surgical intervention for those patients, but um, we've, we've learned a lot about brain function from uh, their behavior before and after um, and it, under, under experimental conditions. So in the, inside the brain, if I take off the, um, the frontal and parietal lobes, you'll see that on the outside, You'll see this, well, it's pink here, but we call that gray matter, the, corte the cortex. And then the axon projections are all that white matter in there. Now, as we go deeper into the brain, um, we have the hypothalamus in here, um, which famously is responsible for the four Fs, feeding, fighting, foraging, and mating. Um, and then you've got here the pons. The pons is, it plays a really important role in sleep and in dreams. Uh, some really interesting experiments with cats um, to do with the pons. So that's worth very much worth looking up. Uh, the medulla oblongata, um, if you've watched the movie uh, Waterboy, is located just here. Um, and then this, the brainstem projects down to the spinal cord, which is still part of the central nervous system. So this is all part of the central nervous system. Uh, what else can I tell you about the brain? Well, there's some really interesting arteries that feed the brain. Uh, the, art, the, ma the main artery that feeds the brain is called the Circle of Willis. Have a Google, have a look at it up. Uh, the Circle of Willis looks like a little person in the middle of your brain. And what's really interesting about the Circle of Willis is that it's a circle. And so if, for example, um, blood is restricted to one side, of, if, if, for example, there's a blood clot on one side of that circle, blood is still able to get around um, your brain, which is really quite interesting. It's sort of a, a backup mechanism within your brain. Uh, well, uh, hopefully that's given you a little bit of a, uh, an understanding of um, the brain structure, the brain stem, the midbrain, and uh, the temporal lobes, and the parietal and the frontal and the left hemisphere, etc., etc. Um, some people who study the development of the brain learn of the different brain parts in terms of telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, metencephalon, myencephalon. And I, I like to use a little rhyme. Um, a little bit of mnemonics to remember those. Um, I, I use to the tune of bingo. Tell die me met my, tell die me met my. Um, and, and that helps me remember all the different parts of the developing the brain the telencephalon, the diencephalon, the mesencephalon, the metencephalon, the myencephalon. Uh, encephalon meaning, meaning, of course, brain. And don't be forgetting to use your German accent when you are studying the brain because it will help you have a lot of fun when you are studying the brain. What's this bit here called? Cerebellum. And what does the cerebellum do? It, sends, it helps you move and ice skate and do everything. And what does it look like? It looks like a cauliflower and a tree. Look at that. I'll show you. Yeah, when you cut it in half, it looks like a cauliflower, doesn't it?